Hey guys, it's me, AJDJBron3, and today we're going to be talking about Transformers The Aligned Continuity. So, Transformers fans, there's been a lot of confusion in the Aligned Continuity, consisting of Transformers War for Cybertron, Transformers Fall of Cybertron, Transformers Prime, Transformers Rescue Bots, and Transformers Robots in Disguise, about certain things just not matching up. So, I thought I'd try and give my own personal theories as to how these individual stories all connect. I said try, so don't blame me if this epically fails. There's a first time for everything, okay? Now, just to let you guys know, the only thing I'll be excluding is the Transformers comic books. Mostly because there were just way too many of them for me to cover. So, the only thing I'll be talking about is the video games and the TV shows. Well, except for this game. Please keep in mind that this is my own personal opinion and that none of my theories are confirmation of anything. So, I believe that covers everything, so without further ado, let's get into it. And what better place to start than Transformers War for Cybertron. Okay, so most of the confusion starts with this one element in War for Cybertron called... Dark Energon. Right, what he said. Anyway, in the game, Megatron obtains Dark Energon for the first time, and continues to use it throughout the rest of the game series, including Fall of Cybertron. But, in Transformers Prime, he acts like he's never seen this stuff before, and refers to it as... Ancient texts refer to as the blood of Unicron. So, what happened? I mean, Megatron had the Dark Energon in the beginning, so what happened to it in Transformers Prime? So here's where my theory comes in. Do you remember back in the end of Fall of Cybertron, when you had that epic battle with Megatron or Optimus, depending on who you were playing? When they were sucked into the portal, the portal that would eventually lead them to Earth, we have no idea what went on in the portal. For all we know, Megatron could have lost it during one of his battles with Optimus on Earth, and over the course of time, probably just forgot about it. I mean, I know I would. And then after Megatron disappeared into space for what Starscream described to be he stumbled upon it and just thought, oh yeah, I remember this thing. Uh, what is it again? Okay, so that's where I'm problem fixed. Kinda. Well, here's where another one comes in. One word, or rather name, Sideswipe. Alright, alright, alright! For those of you who have played Transformers War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, you would very well remember that Sideswipe acted more like his G1 self rather than, you know, a young teenager who goes around breaking rules and stuff like that. My theory is, following the events of Fall of Cybertron, Sideswipe was probably left on Cybertron after the Ark took off. So, being alone on a desolate Cybertron, Sideswipe probably started to become more rebellious, with him not being led by Optimus Prime. I mean, I don't exactly remember him getting on the Ark in Fall of Cybertron, do you? Either that or he was one of the sparks that was created by the end of Transformers Prime Beast Hunters, and decided, hey, I'm gonna take the name from a famous robot named Sideswipe that came before me. Even if that is true, it still begs the question, what happened to the Transformers that did get on the Ark? Such as Silverbolt, Air Raid, Jetfire, Perceptor, and where did Bulkhead come from? I don't remember seeing either of them in Transformers Prime. So which leads me to my next theory. I believe all the Autobots I just named all died on the Ark when it crashed landed on Earth. Either that or they were killed by Megatron and his army of Decepticons later on on Earth. I believe that Bulkhead got on the Ark at some point. Even though in Fall of Cybertron we didn't exactly see him, I mean, he was on Earth, so obviously he got there somehow. So, that kind of solves the whole different sideswipe and certain Autobots disappearing in Transformers Prime. Also where Bulkhead came from. Then there's Soundwave. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of confusion on how Soundwave went from this... Manufacturing and optimal efficiency. ...to this. And I'm not talking about his vehicle mode, I'm talking about his voice. Soundwave had it in Transformers War of Cybertron and Transformers Fall of Cybertron, so why didn't he have it in Transformers Prime? My theory is that Soundwave removed his voice box to keep himself from giving away any important Decepticon secrets. The evidence that supports this theory is found in the episode Minus One in Transformers Prime, where the Autobots interrogate Soundwave to find out about Megatron's plans. As the Autobots continue to interrogate Soundwave, Soundwave begins erasing data from his memory banks by, as Ratchet describes, his own drives. Proving that Soundwave is willing to do whatever it takes to keep important Decepticon information from the Autobots, 
including removing his voice box. So that's basically another theory solved. Now on to another character who receives a lot of confusion and probably more backlash. Grimlock. What? Don't look at me! He deserves this! But in all seriousness, if you remember what Grimlock looked like in Fall of Cybertron, you'll remember that he looked like this. Not this. This. So, how did Grimlock go from being an absolute powerhouse, smashing cons, slashing cons, eating cons, roasting cons, throwing Starscream to a Dinobot who can't even swim? What happened to him? Well, here's my theory. My theory is that the Grimlock we see in Robot in Disguise isn't the real Grimlock at all. What is my reasoning behind this, you may ask? Well, do you remember back in Fall of Cybertron when Grimlock met his imminent fate trying to escape Shockwave's exploding tower? If Grimlock perished on Cybertron, then he can't possibly be the Grimlock that we see in Robots in Disguise. Which leads me to believe that the Grimlock that we see in Robots in Disguise is someone else entirely. I believe that the Grimlock that we see in Transformers Robots in Disguise is one of the sparks that was created by the end of Transformers Prime Beast Hunters. And later named himself Grimlock to pay tribute to the deceased real Grimlock that came before him in Fall of Cybertron. Well, that basically solves all the Transformers aligned continuity gaps. Well, most of them. Keep in mind that these are my own personal theories. For all I know, I could be completely wrong about all of this. And none of this aligned continuity may even be connected at all. But, even if half my theories don't make any sense, and you guys may not agree with them, there are some parts that do connect, proving that aligned continuity is somewhat connected. For example, you remember back in Fall of Cybertron when Shockwave got his arm ripped off by Grimlock? Yeah, that's right. This part. If you look closely at the Transformers Prime Shockwave, you'll notice that he has a gun replacing the exact same arm he had ripped off in Fall of Cybertron. Coincidence? How about this one? In Fall of Cybertron, we see the Decepticon known as Trypticon barely alive and stripped of power. Later, Megatron transforms Trypticon into their new ship known as the Nemesis. But with Trypticon being too damaged, this becomes his permanent form. Then, in the episode Flying Mind, in Transformers Prime, we see the Nemesis come to life from Dark Energon. And of course, the ship is none other than, you guessed it, Rainbow Dash. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's Trypticon. Here's another one. In Fall of Cybertron, after the arc takes off, there are two main Decepticons that stay behind. Starscream and Shockwave. And you'll never guess where we saw them again in the episode Out of the Past in Transformers Prime. That's right, on Cybertron. Yet another coincidence? The same situation applies to Clipchup and RC. We didn't see them get on the arc when it took off, so that means they stayed on Cybertron. And you'll never guess what we saw them in the episode Out of the Past in Transformers Prime. That's right, on Cybertron! Still not convinced? Last and final thing I have to talk about is Rescue Bots. Their story takes place on Griffin Rock, which is an island secluded from any other town. That way, the bots can have their own adventures while still being in the same universe as Transformers Prime. The only proof that we have that Transformers Rescue Bots is in the same universe as Transformers Prime are the cameos of Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and Sideswipe. And basically, that is all I have to say in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and like I said, none of these theories are probably even real, but hey, you guys never know, right? I'm really sure that I haven't been posting a lot of stuff lately. I will be sure to explain everything in my next update video. Until then, Autobots, transform, and roll out!